to the Richard Brown Show right here on WCOMLP, Chapel Hill and Carborough, 103.5 FM. I am Richard Brown, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the show today. The show talks and deals with African American issues, what's going on in the world, how are we interacting with the world, and how we, how we can improve ourselves continually. So these are the things that I like to focus on, and today we're going to be talking about politics and how that connects possibly with uh, pop culture and how that connects with everyday life. And uh, David's work has been on the show uh, at least two times now. And, uh, and I wanted to invite him back on the show and for us just to have this conversation about national politics. November's coming around very quickly and I think that this is not going to be an everyday November. This is going to be quite simply a watershed moment when you start to look at what's happening with the Tea Party, when you start to look at what's really happening inside the Democratic Party. And I mean, I, I've read reports that says that the Republican Party is dead or as, 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 as alive and healthy as, as, as it ever was. So there seems to be a lot of disagreement about what's really happening. And I think that this November, some things are going to shake out. So David, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate it. Um, you've been on the show before. We talked about politics before. Talk to me a little bit about what the landscape is. I mean, I think we really need to back up again to about at least to the to the very least where Obama won and what happens there because I think that to me starts to set the the stage, as it were the chessboard right. to what we have going on here. So I know you've written several articles and, and done a couple of pieces about that. Talk to me a little bit about how you see the Obama presidency sort of setting the stage for where we are right now. Sure. And if that is kind of the, 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 the main thrust of, of, sure. of what you're starting to see going into November. Yeah, no, I, I think it is. Uh, thanks again for having me on. And uh, I, uh, I do think you're, you're focusing on what, what, things really are turning on, which is people's reactions to Obama over the last year and a half, two years, and going into this uh, 2010 uh, midterm elections, that's what a lot of the issues are turning on. Whether people think that, that the Obama administration and Congress have done a good job and are pointing people sort of in the right direction. I mean, no one thinks everything's going in the right direction, but if things are sort of going in the right direction or things are really going not in a in the right direction and and that's sort of where the fault lines are right now politically on on a national level um just going to your question um if you if you look at uh what has happened over the last two years things have sort of settled in with the obama administration and as you uh will recall and as obviously as your viewers will recall um he came in with a lot of high expectations mm -hmm. um he won a pretty handy victory over mccain in 08 and uh, Obama, you know, set off kind of on a course that people thought, okay, he's going to do some things. And even people who didn't necessarily support him thought, okay, well, you know, here we go. And, and then, um, as it turns out, as the first year and a half, two years of Obama's presidency have progressed, things have gotten uh, a little less optimistic, both from the perspective of his supporters and his opponents. Um, and now we're in a situation where... Um, we're getting in two months or less than two months, really a month and a half, you're going into midterm congressional elections where Democrats uh, are expected to lose a lot of seats in, in Congress, um, possibly lose control of Congress, either one or both houses, and um, that's going to really change the second half of Obama's term. But how yeah. much of that, in my mind, how much of that can you pin on Obama and how much of that can you pin on just the current economic conditions? I, when, when I start to look at just the economic indicators, mm -hmm. there's a lot that's basically blowing in the face of the current administration, whether it would have been Republican or Democrat. Right. Um, so when you look at that, I think that that breeds a whole lot of malcontent across the board right. and there's a whole lot I mean, I've seen a whole lot of research that talked about poverty, mm -hmm. almost 50 million people living in poverty. I've seen research that talks about all, you know, all these people need an assistant. Uh, research saying that, you know, one out of eight people, well, you know, what uh, the national average is 
right around 9% of unemployment. Right. With these type of economic indicators, regardless of who's sitting in the office, right. is that you don't have is that something that Obama can be blamed for. Right. And I think right. I think the answer to that is complicated. And I, and I understand what you're saying. It's a couple of things with uh, with regard to Obama. Um, number one, I, you know, I, I, I'm I think you're underscoring the issues that everybody's looking at. There, uh, there, there was a report issued this past week. One in seven people is living in poverty in the United States. I believe that was the number. It seems seems like a crazy number, a but I believe number. that was the number that came yeah. out. Um, unemployment is actually closer to 10% than to 9%, and that's the reported unemployment. You know, a lot of people that's say that that there's a, there's an additional five or 10% of people that are un underemployed, um, and that's not as easy to calculate. Um, you talked about the writing that I've been doing uh, over the course of the Obama administration, for uh, primarily for theroot.com, and uh, you know what I've written about a lot, especially lately, especially over the the uh, summer of, of 2010, has been the discontent with Obama and why there is this discontent with Obama and what what Obama. Is now doing let's wrong. pause right yeah, there. Okay, is that discontent from the right or is it discontent from the left? Because I believe that going back to the inauguration and going back mm -hmm. to Obama getting in Congress, people wanted him to literally bring about Camelot. And I don't think it's a whole lot easier to deliver, to talk about promises than to actually govern. And I think that there, from the left, is a whole lot of discontent. Now from the right, there is a, uh, I mean, there's a much broader, uh, I would use the word almost hatred towards this man when you start to look at you know, a, a lot of the things that are happening, right. specifically within the Tea Party movement and the, and, and the types of vilification that you see as it relates to Obama. So yeah. when They're, you're talking about the writing, talk about which one that you've been focused on primarily. I've been, I've been focusing on it all from the perspective of how Obama is handling it. I think that's where okay. I've, that's a lot of what I've tried to talk about, how Obama is handling it. And, I, and, I, I, and I, I'll start at the top by saying, you know, I don't think he's handling it that well right now. Um, there's discontentment on the left uh, because Obama has really turned out to be not a leftist, even though a lot of people had hopes that he would be, maybe because of his background and maybe because he talked so much when he campaigned for president about transformation and change. There's discontent on the right, I think, as you r described it. I think there is a percentage of people that actually hate him, but a lot of it I don't, I'm not necessarily ready to call hatred as much as resentment, okay? I mean, there's been a lot of talk about how much people on the right hate Obama. Um, you're tuned into the Richard Brown Show on WCOMLP, Chapel Hill and Carborough, 103.5 FM. We're in the studio with uh, David Swirlick, and we were just starting to get into this idea where I said it was, uh, a hatred and and, 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 and and I think when you start to look at the birthers and all these mm -hmm. different people and just the very fact that there is a segment of America who says that he shouldn't even be a president I think that goes beyond just um, just uh, I, I don't like you right and I think I think you're right about that but I think that there are grades on a spectrum of political viewpoints okay sure. you have that percentage of people that does hate Obama. There's a percentage of people, I don't know whether it's 5% or 10% or more than that, who, who hate Obama, who, who they, they have this uh, birther idea that he's not really an American, that he might be a, some kind of secret Muslim and all the other conspiracy sure. theories about him, and then they don't even address the fact that, well, what's wrong with being a Muslim in the first place? Right. Okay, but there's part of the conservative or right-wing, uh, you know, criticism of Obama that I don't think is racist. I think they really see him as just going in the opposite direction of where they want the country to go. And, that, you know, I don't know where the, exactly the cutoff line is, but I think it's too simple to just look at all the opposition to Obama on the right and say that it's because he's black or because people don't think that he's American. Now, would yeah. you agree yeah. that what has happened is that and I've seen these reports yeah. on multiple news channels, multiple uh, radio outlets where they're saying that the, that the Republican Party, that which is moderate, is shrinking. Oh, and, that is, and is much, much smaller than it was 10, 15,